Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Heroja Shai. Hello, and welcome to F Society IRC podcast. I'm your moderator, Heroja Shai, and this is episode five of the uh, seven film series that I believe have some influence on to on the show, uh, Mr. Robot. This is the review of the movie Shallow Grave. So. Shallow Grave, the movie itself, came out in the 90s. Um, it's about three friends who discover their new flatmate dead but loaded with cash. It's directed by Danny Boyle. Uh, Carrie Fox is Julia Miller. Christopher Eccleston is David Steffens. And Ewan McGregor is Alex Law. Uh, this is fairly early in um, all these actors and even the director, David Bowl. I mean, not David, but Danny Bowles' career. It is a uh, kind of was one of those uh, indie art house films. Um, that came in the wave of the, uh, what was it, we say at the beginning, like, it's not Pulp Fiction, it's uh, Reservoir Dogs, Clerks, uh, films of that nature uh, during the 90s. Now, the reason why we're talking about this film is that it pops up in-universe on episode 8, Do Not Delete Me. Uh, this is the film that um, Edward Alderson was going to take Elliot to go see, an effort to bond and make up for our uh, to make up for something, we're not really quite sure what exactly Edward is making up for um, towards his son, towards Elliot, but there is some kind of fracturing of the relationship. Because uh, we know that Edward didn't push Elliot out the window. Uh, we get this information from Darlene, who remembers about around the age of four of Elliot coming home very distraught, smashing his own stuff, and him, him, he himself which is something everyone's kind of suspected pushed himself out the window you know he jumped out himself um but we don't know why elliot did this uh we don't know the nature the factory you know the distrust between edward and elliot that hasn't been revealed to us but we do know that that it's some kind of a traumatic event had occurred and elliot reacted this way we also in this episode from um do not delete uh is the first appearance of Mr. Robot, the fractured personality that is Elliot, appears uh, in this episode as well. So why I want to talk about how this episode might have a bit of a influence. You know, it was a rated R film. Well, while it wasn't very gory, it had very um, adult themes. It was kind of a weird, um, I want to say single room film, you know, where everything takes place in one place and it does it in normally those type of films are very like haunted house films or um very dramatic films which is this film is very dramatic uh, basically these three these three friends are you know they're flatmates that's what they call roommates back in uh jolly old england and is implied that they're you know met through university or, or in university they take on this guy they needed Someone left and they needed the money and they were just being, they're interviewing all these people to be their flatmates and they're just very asshole about it, you know, at peppering them with all these questions, critiquing them, criticizing them. They finally pick this one guy and it turns out he's on the run with all this money that's associated with the, basically the mob, if you will. He dies, um, they find this money and they decide, you know, what they need to do about it. And as a result of this, you know, they've already the different dynamics uh, within the uh, friendship fractured, uh, the character uh, played by Christopher Elkison, uh, David and um, Alex by Ewan McGregor, they are best friends and have been best friends for a very long time. Somehow Juliet comes into into the picture at some point in their friendship and is a bit of an ob- object of their affection on the part of both Alex and David. And whatever the the... the tensions that have been before the little irks or quirks about their the each individual personality kind of manifests and they they start panicking they start turning on each other they start betraying each other um all over this bag full of money basically and betrayals left and right team-ups you know undercut hands uh, you know where the money is hidden it disappears one day someone hid it they're accusing each other Turns out that, you know, David and Juliet were going to run away with each other, but maybe not really. Maybe Juliet was using David so she can get to the money. 
um, Alex thought he had a partnership with Juliet. You know, it's just crazy. It's greed. They could have easily have split the money in three ways and, and parted, if you will. Uh, there is a, you know, the police a little bit involved, if you say, because they did bury this body in a shallow grave. It does get discovered. The guys that are after the, this roommate that died are looking for this money. I think they have it. So there's a lot of pressure on them. Eventually what ends up happening, there's a big, huge fight, a showdown um, over the money. Um, David, like I said, David and Juliet were going to split. Fight ensues. Um, people are getting stabbed. Uh, eventually uh, David uh, dies. Juliet ends up um, stabbing an injured Alex, takes the suitcase and leaves. Um, Alex is pleading with her not to do that, but she leaves anyway. Uh, she gets to the airport and it turns out that um, there's no money in the suitcase, which is a which is a trope that I it mind boggles me that is still pervasive in the in the film that no one checks the bag or the box or whatever it is that they are esconding with the the loot. Uh, never checks to verify. No one ever does it. They just just leave. They assume. Uh, it turns out it's a bunch of cut up um i believe it's phone books of some sort uh papers in the uh in the uh, bag to make it have the weight and feel of money so she's screwed she has these tickets she's trying to leave and she realizes she doesn't have any money and now she's gonna probably be wanted for murder of not just one but two men and the theft of this money at the same time alex who's dying or allegedly dying is not implied if he's actually dead or not because the police do come in they barge in. I guess somebody called the police. They find a dead David. And they find Alex, you know, stabbed into the ground of their apartment. And below him, as the, the detectives are talking over, and you realize he's still kind of alive, maybe just dying. He's kind of a little bit of a laughter. Is that there's the money is below the floorboards. So that's pretty much how the film ends. It's like, I, I guess you could say it's a kind of a India heart art house film noir type of a movie or a crime caper if you will and why i think this film may have an impact on the series is i think it might have not an impact of the past seasons if you will but and you kind of see some of the dynamic of friend betrayals if you will within the f society group of the splitting if you will uh, particularly with the fact that, you know, Darlene has basically ratted everybody out to the FBI. Um, the fact that, you know, there was a team up of Trenton and Mulby and then, you know, what happened to them. Um, the whole dynamic between Mr. Robot, Elliot, and, and, um, God, I'm blanking on his name, Mr. Bonsoir, Tyrell. I don't know why I'm blanking on saying Tyrell and this these different friendship dynamics even you have to in some sense you have to put Irvin in there and White Rose and what used to be her second um I don't think the second has ever been named um that ends up dying in the barn at the end of season three there's all these different kind of friendship and friend enemy dynamics going on in this series I think that with the appearance of Veer popping back up at the end of season four, I think, I mean, season three and going into season four, I think it, there's a possibility that we're going to see money being involved. Of course, um, Elliot is responsible for the fact that Veer lost his drug trade, uh, his little drug empire that he had lost his money. Uh, Veer is a smart guy. He's probably already wear, well aware of the fact that Elliot is very much responsible for the collapse of E Corp, uh, the, all the money, if you will, you know, kind of vanishing or getting locked up and then being re released. So I imagine at some point that the loot, if you will, on the item in question could be either the E Corp finances or possibly, and I'll talk, let's talk about the E Corp finances. Where there might be like a Veer, um, Elliot, Mr. Robot, maybe possibly Darlene dynamic in here in trying to get this money and, and going. You know, Darlene wants to bail basically eventually. You know, she wants to protect her brother. But she's not she's not wanting to stick around really. 
She wants things to be over with. Um, she's lost tremendous, if you will. Um, a lot of relationships have been betrayed. So there's a strong possibility that whatever money play that Vera is seeking and wants Elliot to, ha to have a hand in, that might that might kind of play and nobody really walks away a winner. It, it could be a hint to what's going to happen with the Washington Township plant. I mean, you have White Rose, Price, um, Elliot slash Mr. Robot, all centered around here. Even Angela is in play. Then you, have, of course, have, you know, basically everyone's in play here. And it might be, there might be a play for when the, the Washington Township um, plants parts start moving through customs and start moving by ship to go to the Congo that there might actually be a play for that, whether it be by Price directly or Angela trying to do an, another comeback against White Rose to try to, you know, expose the evil, if you will, and, and make people play. Uh, whether Mr. Robot or Elliot are still trying to get after the 1% of the 1%. There could be some kind of friendship, enemy dynamic where people are just betraying each other right and left to to gain this prize and end up walking away with nothing because the Washington Township plant, um, for all that has been put into all this effort by the White Rose, by Elliot and Mr. Robot taking it down, Edward Alderson being the one to help um, make it happen, Price securing his position at, um, as the CEO of E Corp and then losing it to protect Angela, um, Angela trying to, you know, find out information to try to realize, you know, how her mother was poisoned and all these other people were poisoned. Uh, Colby, all this stuff that is for naught. Whatever the project is, time travel, uh, the best energy plan ever. It's nothing. It's just a bunch of paper and a phone book. It's a bunch of uselessness, if you will. And the actual real prize, if you will, might be something innocuous or Something that's not even really there. And everyone is killing each other for nothing. When perhaps maybe all these players could have split the loot, split the prize, shared the wealth, if you will. But because of ego and pride and ambition and vengefulness and hurtfulness and all these different emotions, that is not what's going to happen. So that's my one thought on this is either veer with some kind of money scheme to get his money and drug empire back into play, whether taking money from E Corp or from somebody else and having Elliot, Mr. Robot doing this, there might be a little uh, shallow grave dynamic. Um, the maybe even the Dom, Darlene, and Irvin dynamic with the fact that Santiago was killed and chopped up, if you will, and he's in some shallow grave somewhere. Um, and Dom now has secured a position with the FBI. Darlene is still her informant, and Irvin is her handler, or Dom's handler, to the White Army. That there might, or not the White Army, but the Dark Army through to White Rose, there might be some kind of betrayal there because after all, Dom and Darlene kind of got together. There was a bit of a friendship. Irvin's on the kind of the outside, outside, but he has a very invested interest to make sure that Dom is still informing to them about what's going on with the invest all the different investigations into you know the dark army into e corp into the washington township plant and making sure those things are curtailed especially with the terrorism investigation to the 71 buildings they make sure none of that blows back to the dark army or not to people that they don't want it to be associated with so there might be a little power play there where a bunch of betrayals and blood is going to occur but I think really it might boil down to, again, to the Washington Township plant and the fact that everyone's pursuing this big money grab, if you will, this big idea, this this white whale, and it's, it is not there. All these portrayals happen, and someone walks away thinking that they walked away with a prize, and it's nothing but a bunch of papers, as much of um, hopes and dreams and bullshit, if you will. And the real object the real desire is buried away somewhere where no one's going to be able to find it and via their death it's is done there's no way to revitalize the washington township plant if you will or whatever that device is that's housed there
So that's, those are my two cents. This is more, I think, the, the, the thematic um, elements of that film might play into season four, which is um, something I'm looking forward to. The other thing is just, just as an emotional, I don't know, emotional pause, if you will, for Elliot, because it's obvious that everything changed, or is one of the, the events that, where everything changed for Elliot, where we saw the manifestation from Mr. Robot that day that his father basically had the heart attack and, and, and died for all intents and purposes. I think that the... The plea on the part of a father to try to connect to his son with this, this object of desire, if you will, this cool new toy that's going to make things better of a rated R film, um, kind of hints to the fractured need, very much the fractured nature between Edward and Elliot and how deep the fracture is and how the disconnect is and how we still really fundamentally don't know why that bond is severed we just have seen the aftermath of the severing of the bond and the dramatic change of Elliot from being it was appears to be an average kid to uh, a child that has these delusions of split personality where he is basically talking to the manifestation of his father this dark personality and has these uh, um, very disconnected emotional viewpoints of the world I mean after all this personality that he has and even himself the 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 self that he presents to everybody planted planned a techno revolution these ha this hacker group to collapse basically the economic infrastructure of the entire world so there's just that you know the, that that entire episode don't delete me uh, which I spoke about in, in my review about being a very much a ghost story. Um, kind of plays into that because you think of the the echoes of friendship, the, the disconnect, the, the animosity, the resentment, the things that are not said and dealt with early on and communication. Very key into this whole entire movie is the lack of communication and the fact that people communicated better and, and stated what they... They wanted, they needed from other, from each other and responded and respected um, and, and came to some kind of either a consensus or understanding or just simply saying this is not working and walking away. Much of the problems that occurred in the movie Shallow Grave would not be, <laughs> would not have happened or would not have ended with a bloodbath and greed and the splitting and the money and not splitting the money and, and moving on, if you will. Which I think might be the hint for really the fundamental hint for what's in play for season four. So that's it. This is my review of the movie Shallow Grave, which is part of the seven film set that I think has significantly influenced um, the Mr. Robot series. Until next time, um, logging off for now. This has been a Ferocious Shine Space Odyssey Network production. <laughs>